Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and the foundation for the chicken coop is done? Yes, it's done. Uh, it's all set. It's been curing for just about four days at this point. You really want to let uh, things cure before you start working with these anchor bolts that you got sticking out of there because it takes a little while for the concrete to really get firm. Like certainly like the very next day you don't want to be messing with it. You, ideally you'd wait like a week and I think I'm going to be waiting a week before I really start stressing these guys out. But uh, you know four days is enough to you know kind of start working with it where I'm not worrying I'm going to damage anything. You can see I've, got, I've started to put some pink foam insulation sliding it down along the outside surface here and I'm going to be putting wire uh, lath and stucco on the outside. But I wanted to talk specifically about the next step here, which is to get these pressure treated uh, sill plates on. It's important to use pressure treated because uh, when it is anywhere near the concrete, uh, concrete when it gets cold, it can kind of uh, uh, condense water like a cold glass of lemonade on a hot day. And you don't want to be getting uh, water onto a, uh, you know, a non-pressure treated board because you, you know, it'll rot out, you get termites, things like that. So we're using pressure treated for uh, what's up um, on the tops here. Uh, before I actually put it down, I've got a little uh, layer of fluffy kind of uh, foam roll, and I'll probably be showing that on a different day. Uh, that's kind of just a, a pad uh, between the uh, foundation and the, the wood itself. does a couple things. One, it, uh, it's like a squishy foam, so it, it uh, kind of fills in all the voids. It also helps to make a little bit more of that break, so you're not having the pressure-treated wood in direct contact with that moisture. Because even pressure-treated wood, it's got a lifespan on it. So the next uh, step that I'm going to be doing, and I'm not going to be doing this today because, like I said, I wanted to let this thing set up a little bit more, but I want to talk about it, is I'm going to be taking the pressure-treated boards that uh, I'm going to be setting down here. And you'll notice uh, just before I cover it up here that my bolts are, this one's on the outside, then the inside, then the outside, then the inside, and I got some mud that I just threw down there. And uh, when I put the board down, it makes it so that it uh, kind of floats right there because it's being supported on both sides. Uh, that's not the primary reason for doing this. The primary reason for doing that is so that you're grabbing the board from both sides. You're grabbing from the outside, grabbing from the inside, grabbing from the outside, inside, uh, to kind of stagger back and forth once you actually put the bolts on. But the next step is to figure out where exactly these holes are. Now what I'm going to be doing, and I'm not going to do it today, is I'm going to take a hammer and tap on top of where all of these uh, bolts stick out here. And uh, what that's going to do is that's going to give me a mark on the bottom where there's like a little dent where the bolts were. I'll take a large drill, drill through uh, this wherever those holes are, uh, wherever those bolt marks were, and then I should be able to take the thing and set it back down on top of here, slide it down, and then bolt it. But I'm, I'm going to wait like a good solid week before I do that. Uh, I could probably do it now. You know, it's, it's been four days. That's fine. But um, there's no reason to because uh, there's, there's other things that I can be working on. I'm going to be working on getting the foam around the, uh, the outside, and I probably have several days of work before I run out of things to do. So why not wait and do this stuff when the concrete wall has had you know, all that much more time to cure. In terms of how it came out, I'm really pleased with it. This is where the uh, entrance is going to be here. The chicken's uh, door is going to be somewhere up on, on that surface. There's going to be beautiful windows. Uh, looking out into the forest here. We'll have some other windows here and there. Uh, I've got some used ones that I just picked up. Someone was throwing them out. Uh, and um, I'm going to be kind of figuring out how they fit and make them look nice in here. But, you know, now that this is done, I've officially saved $5,000. Because if you recall, at the beginning of this, I had the choice between spending $7,000 to get this thing poured or uh, less than $2,000 on just the materials and do it myself. I did it myself. And that difference was $5,000. So I, I'm not sure how many days it took me to do this. So, you know, you can count back the number of episodes we got here. I mean, it can't be more than 10 or so, something like that. Uh, so it's like 500 bucks a day that I paid myself. I got paid $500 a day to do this myself. And I'm glad that I did that. It was a lot of work, but 500 bucks a day, that's a pretty good payday. That's it. Thanks for watching.